Hi, I'm Tony Lestoria. I got another edition of IPI on site. Got Stephen right here of the Cleveland Indians organization pitching down here at Double A Akron, uh, the knuckleballer as they call him. Uh, Steve, uh, glad to have you on the show. Um, how is things going this season, and how are you doing with the knuckleball so far? So far, it's been pretty good. You know, just trying to you know go out there every day, trying to you know figure figure it out. You know, it's a pitch that you know it's, nobody can master, but you just try to understand it. You know, know what works. You know, situations. You know, um, they come up. You know, with the wind and the rain and all that, you kind of just try to put it in the back of your mind. So you know, when it work, when it's working good, you try to remember it. And when it's not working so good, you try to remember that too, so you can try to fix it. Have you noticed a difference uh, from last year to this year? I know, no, obviously the numbers are better, but are you actually feeling better with it too? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I went back to just throwing it. You know, the way I've always thrown it, which is, you know, what other people say is hard. But to me, it's just normal, you know, and it's the speed is what it is, you know. So I just try to, you know, stay within my delivery. You know, I don't try to overthrow it. It's a pitch you can't overthrow uh, because it makes a huge difference when you do overthrow it. And so as long as I stay within my delivery and, you know, just really concentrate on killing the spin on the ball, then I've, you know, it, then it becomes a better pitch for me, and I just become more comfortable with throwing it that way rather than last year. I was trying to throw it slow, trying to kind of tinker with my mechanics a lot to for the knuckleball instead of just taking my mechanics and figuring it out with the knuckleball instead of having the knuckleball change my mechanics. I know you've always kind of toyed around with it growing up, whatever. Um, I think it was what, July of 2010, you are kind of, you know, I guess, monkeying around with it uh, on the field, and I guess one of the coaches saw it. How did that whole thing come about where now it became a, like a, like your main pitch in your arsenal? Well, in 2010, we were in New Hampshire with, uh, and Hibby, our Greg Hibbert was uh, our pitching coach at the time, and I kind of just hopped up on the mound, just kind of threw it. You know, I've thrown it for my whole life. And so I just, you know, I always knew that once I got on the mound, it got a lot better. So I saw an opportunity, jumped on the mound, and kind of messed around with it a little more. And Hibby saw it, and he had me throw a couple more, and then, you know, just kind of came back to Akron, and he asked me to throw a bullpen with knuckleballs, and I did, and I kind of started throwing it as an out pitch that day, or from that day forward, and I had better numbers from that point to the end of the season, and then I came into last uh, spring training last year in 2011, and I same thing, you know, just, just still throwing on my other stuff, but using that as an out pitch, and I had success in spring training, and so they kind of just brought in Candiotti and was just like, to value, kind of evaluate me to see because you know nobody really knows what's going on with a knuckleball so they brought him in and he said it was a good knuckleball and so that kind of started the whole knuckleball process and see where you know and now here I am yeah and that's the thing is really n- n- I guess none of these pitching coaches ever really thrown it maybe they kind of played around with it like you have in the past but bringing in a guy like uh, Kenny Eddie I, I, I know you talked to Charlie Huff a little bit uh um, Jaeger, a, a bunch of guys. Hager, I mean, a bunch of guys. I mean, is that where you're kind of pulling that intel from and all, that, all those resources and using that to your advantage? Yeah, you know, I got a lot of good information from Candy Audi, and then I had a chance to to watch uh, Charlie Hager last year and uh, when he was in Portland, and I had a chance to talk with R.A. Dickey, uh, and then I talked to Huff, and then I actually got to work with Huff uh, when, over at the Dodgers complex. And, it, yeah, it's just like, you know, Charlie Huff, you know, helped me out a lot, but, you know, it's just kind of taking information on what worked for them and trying to make it work for me, you know, because it's, it's, it's a different pitch, you know. It's not a slider, you know, something to where it, all the concepts are pretty much the same, you know. It's kind of the idea is the same is do whatever you got to do to kill the spin on the ball. And so, you know, with, with Charlie Huff, he helped me out a lot just to kind of simplify it and to, to, to feel and to have little drills, you know, to kind of make sure that I can always feel the ball coming off my fingers. It's such a unique pitch. Obviously, it's hard to throw. I mean, it's not the fact that you're throwing it. It's just, you know, throwing it for strikes and or getting it for 50% of the time or something like that. What makes it so difficult, and why don't why don't more pitchers? I guess why don't more pitchers throw it? Uh, it's just a tough pitch, man. I mean, not a lot of a lot of people can do it. Not a lot of people want to basically risk their career to try it. You know, guys aren't going to get drafted as a knuckleball. It's just so it's so it's such an unpredictable pitch, and not too many people are out there that can teach it. So it's like. You know, you got like a handful of guys that have done it successfully, you know, so unless you have insight with them, you're not really going to learn how to do it the right way. And I've just been blessed that I've been able to get in contact with them with the Indians' help, and it's it's really helped me out because it's something that I've thrown since I was nine for fun, and it's like and now I have the opportunity to maybe, you know, have a chance to put myself in a situation to be in the big leagues, you know, for a long time if I can continue to improve and just keep throwing it for strikes. What is the hardest thing? I mean, obviously you can throw it, but what's that 
that thing you need to do to get to, I guess, get to that next level where it's ready, kind of, so to speak? Just stay within my delivery, you know. Sometimes I still get to the point, you know, with situations, you know, with runners on or something like that, I kind of flip the switch to try to go back to where I've always done basically my whole life, you know, which is to compete and to get aggressive. And it's almost the opposite, you know. When when times, you know, times get tough, you know, with runners on situations like that, you know, it's almost you got to take a step back and just work on, you know, the, to simplify it, which is to kill the spin on the ball and to throw it, you know, in the strike zone. Everything else is out of my control. And so when I get aggressive with it, that's when I start to lose the feel for the knuckleball, which makes it harder to come back because it's such a feel pitch. What about your other pitches? Obviously, you came in as a fastball slider guy. Are you still throwing those two pitches? Are you throwing anything else in the mix there? Or is, this, is, that, is it really the... Is it, is it a knuckleball, and then maybe mixing the fastball a little bit here and there, and you throw anything else in there? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely primarily knuckleballs right now, but I still throw, you know, my four seamer. I throw a little sinker, a little cutter, and I still throw my curveball. You know, but primarily I use those to to buy a strike or to get me back into account. You know, if I lose the feeling of my knuckleball, you know, I do have those other pitches to fall back on. And I was like, but my my primary goal is to to throw the knuckleball as much as I can. I, I know you were when you weren't a knuckleballer, you're kind of like a low 90s guy. Part of the thing with knuckleball and the other pitch is you have to repeat the delivery and all that stuff, so you can't really rear back and throw it. You kind of have to pull back on the velocity a little bit, and then uh, is that, does that change your, your slider and, and those other pitches, how you throw them? Uh, not really. I mean, I throw them all pretty much the same. You know, my velocity has dropped a little bit because of the knuckleball, but it's still, I mean, I'm still throwing like 86 to 90, you know, on days, and so as long as I get to keep the feel for my cutter and my sinker and all that, it's like it doesn't affect it that much because it's it's not a knuckleball, you know. So if I throw a little cutter, you know, maybe the hitter's thinking it's a fastball, and they take a you know a different swing and it kind of just moves off the barrel of the bat. That's all my goal is when I throw those pitches is to get a strike, and to if they do swing, just to get them to miss hit it. And then this is what your seventh year now, uh, sixth year playing. I think the first year you didn't. You know, it was a sign. It was like a two draft in those six, and then you signed for 07. So your sixth year playing. You think this could be that that pitch that kind of gets you over that hump and, and maybe gets you that opportunity in the big leagues? I hope so. You know, like if it's not, I've been wasting my time. You know, so I mean, I feel like it has. I mean, it's something that's unique. Nobody really does it. If you can do it correctly, I mean, you see Wakefield and Charlie Huff and all these guys that have done it you know, year in and year out for, you know, to the end of their 40s. So I think it's definitely going to give me a chance. And if I'm going to do it, it's going to be with a knuckleball because it's just it's something that kind of separates myself from other, you know, right-handed pitchers. And that's always the big thing you always talk about is finding a way to separate yourself. Well, good luck the rest of the year, and uh, hopefully we'll see you up in Cleveland soon, okay? All right, that's Stephen Wright. Uh, like I said, uh, pitcher of the Cleveland Indians organization, right-handed pitcher for the Akron Arrows. That's a wrap.